Hi guys! So, a lot of you guys don't know, and a lot of people in general don't know, that I have had cancer before. It's been on my mind a lot lately, so I thought I would just go ahead, tell my story, tell everyone how I found it, etc. Because I think it's kind of interesting and I like hearing cancer success stories. So, yeah. If you don't like gory things, if you don't like graphic content, if you don't like hospital dealios, don't watch this. It is not fun. Okay, so first we're gonna talk about my discovery or like before I even found out I had cancer. So I would say back in like October of 2016, I wanna say, and every single time that I, I would bleed and I was like, oh, maybe it's just my period, maybe I don't know. And it just kept on happening, like no matter what time of the month it was. And it kept going on for a couple months. And then my periods were kind of heavy for some reason. I never got them regularly. They were always all over the place. So back in 2016, when I was having bleeding problems like that, I went to my family doctor and I was telling her my problems, blah, blah, blah. And then she put one of those prongs. I don't know what they're called the prongs in to where they give you like a pap smear. But since I was 20 at the time, she didn't give me a pap smear. And it kind of blew my mind because I was having such extreme problems. She's like, oh, since you're under 21, we can't give you a pap smear, blah, blah, blah. Even though I was sexually active, she just didn't give me one. And she looked inside and she was like, hey, there's nothing there, you're fine. Just take this medicine for probably some kind of infection. So I was like, okay, whatever. Four or five months went by. I was very far away from home and it just kept happening. I kept bleeding. It was more frequent. It was more often and it was very, very extreme. When I mean extreme, I mean prob- oh my god. Just like thinking about it, it freaks me out because of how much blood there was. It was very abnormal. So then I decided to go see a gynecologist where I was, which I was very scared because gynecology can be freaky. And if you've never been to a gynecologist, it is definitely very intimidating. But I went to this one that was very like female driven and very like happy feeling. So I wasn't too scared. But I remember going in and telling her my symptoms, sitting in a chair, and I was like freaking out or whatever. I'm like, oh, they're not gonna find anything. And then literally the second she like looked inside and like put the prongs in or whatever, she looked and she was like, oh my God. And I was like, Jesus Christ. She's like, I can see this thing that kind of looks like a fibroid sitting on your cervix. And if you don't know the female anatomy, here it is, one, two, boom. So your cervix is right above your vagina, I believe. Yeah, she said, oh, we'll have to do an in-house surgery of it just to get rid of it, blah, blah, blah. And then I ended up getting a very long and painful ultrasound of that whole area when I was away from Wisconsin. A lot of bad sh ended up happening, so then I ended up moving home. So I had to send all of that paperwork back to Wisconsin. It was very stressful. And I was like, mom, I don't know what this is. Scared the shit out of me. So then I ended up getting surgery of the removal of that fibroid at the time on September 13th, I believe, of 2017. And then she's like, oh yeah, it went great. I didn't get a call for like two weeks. And I was freaking out at that point because I'm like, I don't know why they're not calling me. My mom's like, oh, if they haven't called you yet, it's probably because it was nothing, which I was like, okay, cool. One day I was home and and my older sister was living with us at the time. And I get this phone call from my doctor and she's like, I'm sorry to tell you, but you have cancer. And I didn't really, I didn't really react to it the way other people did, or maybe they did, I don't know. But she told me that and I was just like, okay. She's like, we need to get you in for testing. We need to get you in for this. It's something that we've never seen before. So we need to get the ball moving. So I was like, okay. So I hung up the phone and I was shaking so hard. I didn't cry. I didn't know how to react. I remember telling, I remember telling my older sister and she's like, oh, it'll be okay. We can do this, blah, blah, blah. And then I call my mom panicking and then I texted my dad. That call of like someone telling you you have cancer is just unreal, extremely unreal. And then ever since, I feel like that was the beginning of October that they ended up calling me, that from that point, everything from there just felt very unreal. I don't really remember a lot of it. A lot of it's kind of a blur and went by very fast. And I never even thought that I had cancer. I was like, oh, whatever, I'm just doing surgeries. I want to 
get this over with because it's fucking stupid. I was 20 years old and a 20 year old should not have to go through cancer like that. Also disclaimer, if I get very red, which you can see here, don't mind it. I'm just very anxious. Talking about this is extremely hard, so just don't mind my red chest. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the process of after being told about my cancer. This was a very hard cancer process, I guess. On October 30th of 2017, I ended up getting what's called a cold cone biopsy, and then just a biopsy of my cervix and my lymph nodes. That experience was very hard. Waking up from that surgery was very hard because the anesthesia was just not the right kind, and it took me seven hours to wake up. And I was puking, I was very dizzy, I don't remember the whole seven hours of trying to wake up. That was tough. So here's a picture of my stitches, I guess. They used glue to glue up my stitches and they went in laparoscopically, I believe is what it's called. So they just went in little areas instead of whatever else they could have done. So then I get the results back from that like about a week later and they told me that there is no cancer in my lymph nodes, which thank the Lord, I had no idea what lymph nodes were back then. But now after freaking out and doing a lot of research, lymph nodes and cancer are not not a good mix. It wasn't in my lymph nodes, but there was some of the tumor left on my cervix. So from like November until December, I went and got three opinions total. My first opinion was from where I got the biopsy done in Milwaukee, and they pushed me to other locations to see if I wanted other different opinions. So I went to New York City, and their second opinion was to give me a surgery. I'll put the word here, I don't remember what it's called. But they wanted to take out that part of my cervix and then just leave everything else. That surgery was extremely risky, a lot of risk factors, involved with it. I didn't really care at that point I would say if I could have kids or not because I had cancer and I'd rather not have cancer than be able to still have kids and birth a child. That option I wasn't like very keen on so then we went to Madison, Wisconsin and I met up with my lovely doctors that I have now and they decided that I should get a hysterectomy. They called it a radical hysterectomy which it's a removal of all of your women reproductive organs I guess. So I forgot to mention this I'm sweating. I forgot to mention this, but so what I had is not cervical cancer, wasn't caused by HPV. The doctors, all three different doctors that I saw all over the place had no idea what this was and they have only ever seen three other cases in the United States of this type of cancer with girls my age, which is very, very, very extremely rare. Freaked the shit out of me. The doctor in New York called it some type of melanoma, but that doesn't really make sense. And then the doctors in Madison, Milwaukee, he considered it. It's a very long word. Endocervical fibroblastic malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor. That, I guess, is a type of tumor, sarcoma tumor, that attacks your nerves into making a ball of cancerous cells, I guess, and then just starts attacking everything, and it is a very aggressive and scary type of cancer, and at the time I didn't really see it that way. I was like, oh, I don't have cancer, even though I did. I guess that was my coping mechanism back then. Just forget about it and don't actually think you have cancer and it'll make you feel better, which it did in the process. So then after talking to all three different doctors, I decided to go with doing a radical hysterectomy on December 18th of 2017. Here's my stitches from that. That one was, it was a lot easier waking up from that surgery than it was the biopsy one. Getting hysterectomies are very common, so the surgery wasn't like something risky or anything because a lot of women, older women, get hysterectomies. So they took out my cervix, my uterus, the area surrounding the cervix, and about about half of my vagina inside. I told you this is graphic, I'm sorry. I was 20 years old when I got this. I am now currently 22 and it's kind of scary being 20 year old and getting a hysterectomy because you don't hear about that a lot. I have never heard of anyone under like 45 or 40 getting a hysterectomy. The process itself was kind of scary. Getting surgery is scary. But when I had a hysterectomy, I had to be sexually inactive for I think it was 8 to 12 weeks and then I ended up having sex at like the eight week mark. Afterwards, I started bleeding. I was like, okay, I don't think that's normal. I'm not supposed to bleed because there's no hole anymore. It just kind of closes itself off. It's called like a vaginal cuff, I guess. And then once I started bleeding a little bit, I started getting these extreme pains in my stomach. Like I'd have a heating pad on, I took ibuprofen. I couldn't sleep because I was like crouched and it just hurt so, so, so bad. This is the worst pain of my life. I can usually tolerate a ton of pain, but this really fucking hurt. So 
I ended up calling my doctor that night while I was hurting and I was like, hey, I'm bleeding, I hurt really bad, I don't know what's going on. She's like, oh, it could happen, blah, blah, blah. It's probably just your scar tissue. I was like, okay, whatever. And then literally the next two days, I was in agonizing pain. And then I told my mom and I was like, mom, I, I can't, I don't know what to do. So then I ended up calling my doctor again. They got me in the next day. I went in the next day for a vaginal exam. And it was actually one of her students who was doing it. She looked and she's like, oh, that kind of doesn't look normal. There's some pus around it. I'll get the main doctor in here. So then my main doctor came in and she was like, oh yeah, you'll probably need surgery on this, blah, blah, blah. And I was by myself because I didn't think this would be anything bad. And she's like, oh yeah, you're gonna need surgery because this can be risky, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'll come this weekend. And she's like, oh no, we're gonna have to do it tonight. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And I started bawling and I called my mom and my dad. I was like, I don't know what to do. I had to get surgery that night. And it was like 3 p.m. at that time. Oh, anyways, why I had to get surgery is because I had something called a dehiscence, which happens in about like one to 3% of hysterectomy patients, I guess. It's extremely rare, which what's freaking new, my cancer was rare, this is very rare. I ended up having a dehiscence and it's when the vaginal cuff of, so here is the top of my vagina, I guess, and then it just goes down into the opening, whatever. So that opened up and then a part, apparently, a part of my bowel intestines was sitting on top of the vaginal cuff and was like, it opened and then it started seeping through. And if I didn't get surgery that day, I could have had sepsis and died is what they told me. And that is fucking scary. Apparently it was an easy fix. They just went back and through my previous hysterectomy holes for the third time, which probably wasn't good. Life after a hysterectomy and a dehiscence has been very hard, very different. My parents were very supportive and very like into my case and helping me along the way, making sure I was okay. My siblings were amazing with it. We always had a good time in the hospital. It was fun, even though you're in a hospital and it's not supposed to be fun. Getting a hysterectomy is very shitty. You're getting all of your organs taken out of you and your organs move because your uterus, I guess, is like a pretty big organ. So then your bladder goes in place of your uterus, which is where you carry a child in the uterus. Yeah, so like trying to go to the bathroom normally after getting a hysterectomy was very different. I don't know, it's just very odd. This whole thing sucks that I had to go through when I was 20 and now that I'm 22, I'm still cancer free, but I've had not scares, but like two odd things that have happened since then. And I'm very self-aware of my body because if anything goes wrong, I am in the doctor's office, which my mom always says I need to chill out because I'm a hypochondriac. It makes sense because I had cancer. So now if I feel like a bump on my arm, I'm like, oh my God. And I start freaking out and then I go on the doctor and then they'll do tests and they'll be like, oh, you're fine. So this was this year, actually. I believe it was like September of 2018. This past year, I felt this lump on my boob and it was pretty big. I was freaking out. I called and I went in to my doctor right away and then they did a biopsy of it the next day, which thank the Lord that they were able to do that to not only ease my thoughts, but to figure out what the hell it was, because why, why? And then that came back benign. They said it's just a fibroadenoma, which is pretty much a fat tissue in your boob or like a fat cyst, I guess. And it's common in women, young women actually, and they are supposed to go away, but sometimes they don't. So for now, I'm fine. I'm cancer free. My mental health after cancer has been very hard, not fun to deal with. I see a therapist when I can. I bother my mother every day and say, hey mom, I have this pain. And she's like, hey, you're fine. Or hey, you should probably go to the doctor. So bless her soul for listening to my bullshit every day and dealing with it. Or even my boyfriend, he deals with it all the time. Time and is extremely supportive. God, I'm extremely red. Do you see that? Oh my. But yeah, there is my cancer story. I have been cancer free since they would say December 19th of 2017, and it is it's been about a year and a half since I've had cancer. Girls, just make sure if you are sexually active to go get a pap smear, or if anything seems abnormal, talk to your doctor. Talk to specifically a gynecologist, not your primary care, because they don't specify in women reproductive organs. So go see a gynecologist, get a pap smear if you can. Just don't let that shit go out the window because I didn't have cervical cancer. I had endocervical MPNST, which is the type of tumor I had, even though it was like kind of 
in the realm of cervical cancer, but mine was not caused from an HPV virus. It was, it's unknown how malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumors come about, but if you can, get tested, get a regular pap smear, talk to your gynecologist, find someone you're comfortable with. My gynecological oncology people are phenomenal. I can be so open with them, ask them any questions. I don't feel awkward when I go in there. They always talk and like make jokes and they're great. So thank you to my doctors from Madison at UW Madison Health. And yeah, that's been a big part of my life since almost about two years now. Thank you guys for watching and listening to me ramble. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I might make a video answering some questions or even like questions that I would have. Thank you guys again. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.